Beverly Hills. That's where I want to be. If that wasn't the first thing you thought of whenever you clicked onto this video, well, I'm afraid I'll have to disown you. Hello everyone, my name is Katie Carson. I am the Duchess of Suds here at Royalty Soaps and we're making a Beverly Hills inspired soap today. In February, I went to LA for the first time with my best friend Caroline. You can see a big highlight reel of that trip on my personal Instagram. It was honestly, honestly just one of the best experiences ever. Like I don't even, it's hard for me to summarize in words how I felt about that trip because it, LA is just, it is its own universe over there. So we got to go to lots of different parts. We went to Venice and we went to Beverly Hills and I had brunch at the Beverly Hills Hotel. I got an acai bowl. It was delicious and this soap is inspired by the pool and restaurant area. I'll insert a picture here so you can see what I'm talking about. The green and pink striped linens are kind of the primary feel I was going for with this soap as you will be able to see. And of course I added a little bit of something something to to the top to make you feel a little extra fancy, a little more luxe, and just a little more wealthy. I honestly did not belong there. <laughs> I got there and was like, you're going to know that I bought these shoes from Target. Didn't stop me from having a great time, I can tell you that. This soap will be available to purchase on May 6th, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time with the Mother's Day and Brunch collection because this is like the epitome of the perfect place to take your mom for Mother's Day to brunch. And without further ado, let's make some Beverly Hills soap. Okay, so first of all, before we even begin, these are the nastiest gloves I've ever seen. I ran out of my clear ones, and now I have to use these. They're still not latex gloves, they're those vinyl gloves, but they look so gross. <laughs> I pour a lie down a stick blender. I'm literally creating all the bubbles because I'm not pouring slow enough. <laughs> So let's blend on high until just past emulsion. I mean, just past. We want this to be like water thin. being reached, it's time to split our batch off. Now, I'm actually gonna pour one layer at a time because I feel like leaving all of it together in this bucket keeps it more liquid for longer. I don't know why, it just does. And I am going to weigh it because I wanna make sure that all the layers are the same size. So now I have three pounds in this container and I'm gonna go ahead and add the first colorant. The first colorant is Lounge Lizard. This is from Mad Micah's. And I'm gonna begin by blending this in with my spatula first. Again, trying to keep everything as fluid as possible, which is another reason why I incorporated it into oil first. That way it disperses all through the soap very easily. And now to this perfect green, we are going to be adding champagne sugar fragrance oil from the sage. The very first time I smelled this fragrance was at a Renaissance fair, probably eight years ago. And I just, I just, couldn't, I don't know why, I don't know why, I just couldn't buy it. I just thought, oh, I've never used that company before. I don't know if it's gonna be good. I don't know if it's gonna do bad things to my soap. But for Beverly Hills, I decided it was worth the risk because I cannot think of anything more perfect for a Beverly Hills soap. Gone ahead and added the proper amount of fragrance oil. You figure out the proper amount of fragrance oil by looking at the usage rate on the supplier's website. If the supplier doesn't list a usage rate, you can always contact them about it. But typically any reputable fragrance oil supplier is gonna tell you the usage rate on the product listing. I blended it a few seconds with the stick blender, so now it's time to pour it into my large slab mold. This is going to be a relatively thin layer, as will the layers coming after it. So I do need to make sure that it's evenly dispersed all throughout this entire mold. And I'll do so by shimmying it down and then tapping it on the 
ground. That will also help get all the air bubbles out. And because I'm leaving all the soap in the same big container, I'm gonna continue to use this white bowl over and over and over again. Little bits that are still left in here, like what I have, are not gonna make a lick of difference to the final color of the next layer. And speaking of the next layer, I've gone ahead and poured off the next three pounds. And to that, we are gonna be adding some ballet slippers, Micah. This is also from Mad Micah's. Just gonna put that right in here. It's a little thicker than that lounge lizard was. And I've said it once, but I've said it again. I am always very impressed with the pigmentation of Mad Micah's colorants. Gonna go ahead and incorporate that with my spatula also. Look at that pink. Oh, I love it. This really is turning out to be the perfect palette for the Beverly Hills Hotel restaurant area. I've added the fragrance soil, so I'm going to go ahead and mix that in by hand very quickly, and then we'll go ahead and pour this layer onto the first one. Okay, let's see this color cover up the first layer. This is the most satisfying part of soap making to me, is seeing layers cover each other up. And this fragrance oil is pretty darn easy to work with, and it's great because once you pour it into the mold, it does seem to set up rather quickly for layers, which is awesome. Gonna scrapey scrapey my little containy, give it a little shimmy, make sure it's evenly distributed. And we will move on to pouring layer number three. I'm not gonna show me mixing it up because it's the same thing as layer number one. <laughs> I'm gonna have to be very careful with this layer because that pink, while being set up, is still pretty liquidy. It's just set enough for me to pour very gently on top of it. Probably gonna have to stop talking now so I can actually concentrate. Now for the final layer. We're gonna pour this whole bucket on top and we're gonna color it a very light pink. The pink we are using is Cosmic Carolyn, so I'm gonna go ahead and put that in. And then we're also gonna put in some titanium dioxide. Ooh, that looks cool. It looks like an acrylic pour painting. And I'm gonna blend that in with the stick blender because titanium dioxide, well, it just needs to be blended with a stick blender. This is literally the most perfect pink color. So I'm going to add the fragrance oil and then we'll pour it on top of all the other layers. I have some extra hands for this because it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to pour it all in without spilling something or breaking something. Ooh, oh, <laughs> luckily everything is pretty firm by now, but still nice to have a helping hand. Why would you say no if it's an option? Oh, this pink, this this is Beverly Hills Pink. Before I put anything else in, I am going to try to even out the top, just bounce it around, get it into all the corners. Anything that looks lumpy, we make look smooth. I just took way too long to scrapey scrapey my big containy. I'm gonna bounce this down again, and then I'm gonna have Caleb tap this down on the ground just to make sure that everything's leveled, there's no air bubbles, and it's as even as I can get it. Now we're going to leave this top relatively plain. So taking a popsicle stick, I am just going to make very, very faint lines here on top. I'm not going in very deep. I'm not making it perfect. It's just supposed to add a teeny tiny bit of texture so the top isn't completely flat. And I mean, roughly it looks like, I don't know, maybe four or five squiggles per loaf of soap. Then I'll just put one right down the middle. Again, just to make sure that the top isn't completely flat. I'm not a huge fan of flat top soaps. They are really dramatic with certain designs and can be so, so stunning. But for most of the things that I design, having a little something something on top is really nice, especially when the inside of the bar, like this one, is not plain, but just more simple. This also adds a good deal of what I feel looks handmade because no matter what I do, none of these lines are gonna be exactly the same 
same. So it just makes every single person and every single bar feel unique. I'm just gonna continue this all the way down and no, I'm not putting glitter on the top because tomorrow I'm putting on gold leaf and that is what needs to be the ultimate showstopper. So we're gonna leave it plain otherwise. We're also gonna spritz it very liberally with rubbing alcohol because we don't want it to get soda ash on it. Kenny is gonna have to edit out so much of my heavy breathing. <laughs> Okay, so with all the texturing done, I'm gonna liberally spritz this with rubbing alcohol. And I've seen the comments that are like, girl, get a bigger sprayer. But I like having this much control over where it's going. I feel like, I don't know, like I just have a better handle on it. So that's why I use sprayers this small. And this is what the soap looks like up close. Totally got that vintage bubblegum pink going on. I am digging it. So I am gonna wait 18 to 24 hours and then we will come back split the slab into loaves and then cut the loaves into bars after this quick commercial break we will also put the gold leaf on top which is very important we are back the next day, so it is time to put the gold leaf on top. So I have my sheet of gold leaf here. I'm gonna spritz the top a little bit with rubbing alcohol. I've already spritzed it once, but it's already starting to evaporate. And then taking an artist's brush, I'm gonna puncture the gold leaf piece, and I'm gently just gonna put it on the top here. Actually, it appears I can take off pieces with my gloves and then just kind of move them where I want. I'm not gonna do the entire soap, but you can see now why I decided to put the texture on top because it really makes the gold leaf stand out. And then just taking my brush, I'm just kind of dabbing it in place. And once again, I'm taking random pieces of gold leaf so it doesn't look perfect. Some of it I'm slightly crushing as I put on top and I'm even using my fingers as you can see to kind of move it around and make it look even more imperfect. I've decided to take some strips of it actually and do it like this because I think on the cut bars that's actually going to end up looking a little bit better is to have big strips of it that then just get cut. So we're ready to cut into the Beverly Hills soap. And that pink line in there will get lighter with time. That's just the way it looks whenever it's first been cut. I've lined it up with my multi-bar cutter. I'm just gonna press down gently. Take out one from the middle. And this is what it looks like on the inside. So once again, I'll put my inspiration photo here on the side. I'm digging the colors. And of course, the gold leaf on top really just adds a little bit of a whimsical touch. Yay, gold leaf. And the fragrance is divine. Honestly, one of my favorites. She said for the one millionth time. <laughs> So Caleb joins me now with the question of the day. Would you rather never be able to leave your city slash town or weep uncontrollably every time someone tells you a joke? Oh, can you answer first? Um, I would rather cry because I think that's kind of funny. <laughs> And also, never being able to leave our city is horrible. That's true. I guess I'm taking the crying as well. To vote in the question of the day is really simple, though it's probably going to hurt your brain to come up with an answer to this question. All you have to do is click the I in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. How are we feeling about that gold on top? I don't know, something about it just, ma it just makes me happy. It's like that little extra rhinestone on your nail or something whenever you go get your nails done and they're like, boop, let me just put that on there for you, sweetie. And you're like, this makes it 10 times better. Once again, this soap will be available to purchase on May 6th, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, royaltysoaps.com. Honestly, one of my favorites from this month. And let me show you a picture of my illustration. This was just one of those months that I enjoyed illustrating. Huh? How you like those palm trees? <laughs> 
I was supposed to put a picture here of my little Instagram photo, but I haven't put that in yet. Also, I didn't want to reveal what the special additive was on the recipe sheet because I also wanted to surprise some of the people who work with me. <laughs> anyway, be sure you do something fun for yourself today, whether that is going onto Spotify and listening to Beverly Hills. Or maybe, if you live close, actually going to the Beverly Hills Hotel. It is expensive, it's Beverly Hills. It is worth a splurge one time. I even kept the receipt. Either way, do something that makes you really, really happy, and I will see you guys soon. So until then, bye for now. Meow!